So today's video, I wanted to talk about um, something that is I feel like has been on my heart for a while now and it has to do a lot with, like I see this a lot in the church, at least in my generation, if I may so speak. And if I'm looking down, I just have like a few flashcards or something just so I can kind of, you know, be in line with what I'm saying. but. You know yeah like i said something that i've noticed at least in my generation this this generation of christianity today is the subject of mercy the mercy of god i feel like if there is anything that has been abused in the church of god or pertaining to god it has to do with this subject of grace and mercy you know i feel that a lot of people um when people think about grace and mercy, unfortunately, some people think it's some kind of warranty that you can sin, you can do everything that you want, and then in the end, as long as you say sorry, then the whole thing is just, you know, rolled over. You can just, you know, gather whatever junk in your life and just, you know, hide it under the carpet and, you know, or just throw it at the face of God and then. You can just go around doing whatever that you want to do and it's really really sad seeing how that translates into this generation you know this is a generation um, a time in christianity where a lot of people are very very conscious of the grace of god you know which is a good thing it's good to know that you know god's hands are open to everyone that will call upon him as the bible says as many as call upon the name of the lord say they shall be saved so it's a good um place a good mindset to have that you know despite my sins despite my shortcomings god is still willing to take me in god is still willing to help me overcome these challenges god is still willing to you know transform my life and things that are so yeah so i just wanted to talk a bit on this subject of mercy and um, specifically the f the fact and the idea that the mercy of God is a privilege and not a right like I need that to sink in like the mercy of God is a privilege and it's not a right you know so okay let me I'll just go ahead and start with like kind of some of the things I have here um, so God's mercy like I said is a privilege and not a right um, some 32 verse 1 it says blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered so you know here i don't i don't exactly know if it was david who wrote the psalms but whoever wrote the psalms here is acknowledging that you know to say blessed is he whose iniquity is forgiven is to acknowledge that hey you know like if this is a privilege you know it's not just something that oh like it's free in the market and stuff like that you know there are people who have suffered i mean really been unlucky you know because of certain actions that they took um there are some people that have died in really some sins that if they had just one second one more chance you know maybe they wouldn't have gone into those situations and stuff like that but you know again blessed is he whose sin is forgiven whose transgression you know whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered so it's a great privilege that you should have your sins forgiven it's a great privilege that god should look upon you with mercy you know it's not a right it's a privilege and you know just like i said earlier we have this thing going on in the church and i'm not it's not a, it's not specific to maybe America or Africa and stuff. I just feel like it's, it, it, and, and it's, it really saddens me to just see how um, quote-unquote theology goes ar around in this generation. You know, people thinking that, oh, I can go and fornicate, excuse me to say. I can go and tell lies and everything. God understands. I'm just a human being. You know, he will forgive me as long as I come and I'm, I say I'm sorry. You know, everybody, you know, sorry is overrated. Sorry is overrated in the body of Christ today. So I just want us to understand that, yes, you know, 
being able to find mercy before God is a privilege. Yeah, the Bible says in um, Hebrews 4, 16, that let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find help, in, uh, and find grace to help in time of need. But that, that still doesn't mean that go around, do whatever, you know. That is just acknowledging that God has opened his hands why he has opened himself wide open to us that in our weakness we don't have to shy away from him but that as long as we can come before him to help us to overcome all those challenges like apostle paul writes also i believe um second corinthians 12 verse 9 and 10 where he talks about um you know in his weakness he will rejoice why because when he is weak then he is strong then he is strong because god's grace is sufficient for him so uh, I'll, I'll refer, I'll see if I got that scripture right, but yeah, great, the grace of God is there to help us in our weakness, you know. There's not a just man that does good and does not sin. I think that's written somewhere in the book of Ecclesiastes. I'll leave again, leave it somewhere here, if, you know, but yeah, um, I think that we need to understand that the message of God is a privilege and an opportunity for us to approach God, not just, oh, I'm living in grace, so I will do whatever, I will live like the rest of the world, and then God will forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry to say it doesn't work that way. So the second scripture is that, um, Romans 9 verse 15, which says, For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Um, so that's Apostle Paul, I believe, talking, uh, quoting something, sorry. So that's Apostle Paul quoting a scripture from Romans 9.15. It says that, I will have mercy, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and have compassion on whom I will have com compassion. So that goes again to the idea that mercy is a privilege. Some people will get away with certain things, others wouldn't. I'm sorry to say it like that. And those who do get away with it, it's not because um, God is unfair, but that's, what, that's again the point. God can decide to show mercy on who he pleases and, on, and, and, and have compassion on whom he chooses to have compassion on. So let, again, it's, it's up to God, it's not up to us. You know, there are some people, like I think I probably said it before, that did certain things and they didn't get away with it, you know. I, I know who I, a, a, a typical example people reference might be David, you know, he's seen with Bathsheba and stuff like that. That's not a warrant to say immorality is okay or that all of a sudden you can escape judgment by fornicating or by committing adultery. Like, literally, that's not a guarantee. Moses killed a man, the Bible makes us understand, but there are other people who kill somebody and not get away with it the way that, quote-unquote, he got away with it. I'm not saying that um, God's just, justice is unfair, but let's also look at the example of a man like um, Apostle Paul himself. You know, he bore witness to the grace of God to one of the highest extent, you know, the high, one of the highest levels possible. The fact that he he persecuted the church, he killed innocent people. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't even know where to go. He himself said, said right about the fact that he, he was the least among people, but God, you know, chose him to display this, the level of his grace, you know. So, yeah, like I'm saying, please don't go about saying that, oh, David did this, God forgive him, so God will forgive me. Ah! You will not be lucky. You know, Saul did something and he didn't get away with it. You know, David somehow might have got away with it. The same way you might do something that you think, oh, other people did it and got away with it. Don't be stupid because, you know, um, it doesn't work that way. If I were you, it's better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. So that's what I kind of have to say about that. Um, yeah, so again, going on the idea that it's a privilege, guys, it's a privilege, you know. Another scripture kind of to back up, to reference what I said in 
Romans 11, 21 and 22, we say, For God did not spare the natural branches. He may not spare you either. Therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God on those who felt severity, but towards you, goodness, otherwise you will be cut off. You know, sometimes it's easy to look and say, oh, these people are doing this. These people are doing that. They are getting away with it. Don't, please don't fall um, victim to that kind of mentality or that kind of, you know, don't think that, oh, I'm doing everything right. I'm, you know, maybe keeping myself, maybe I'm praying and, and this, this and that. Why, how is it that I feel so stuck in life and this other person that is out here, you know, just doing anything anyhow is getting, quote unquote, getting away with it. Please don't fall victim to that because, like I said, everything in this life is in the hands of God. Every single thing in this life is in the hands of God. And I think you should just have your mind on God and have the right perspective about why you are serving God in the first place, you know. Um, uh, first Peter, I believe, chapter 2, verse 1. I think I might have it somewhere here. Um, it says that, I believe it said that, um, you know, that let us therefore lay aside malice, hypocrisy, and all these things. He said, and what? The desire the pure milk of righteousness that we might grow if indeed we have tasted that God is gracious so have the right mindset you know think about how fortunate you are that today you know God and there's somebody out there perishing in iniquity perishing in you know whatever situation that they are going through think about how fortunate you are that today you know God and you have come to you know, really experience that mercy and that uh, grace that God has extended to us in the world. Excuse me. So let us not take the grace of God for granted. So, yeah. Um, so a few things. The last subject that I will probably want to discuss is kind of what the purpose of mercy is in the first place. So why is mercy you know, important, an important aspect of Christianity, you know, just to be clear again, it's a privilege, not a right. I mean, if there's anything that you can get from this video, please understand that God's mercy is a privilege, a privilege, not a right. But yeah, um, to move, to go on. Um, so why exactly um, is mercy so important? And I think the biggest reason why God has mercy or shows mercy is for the purpose of repentance. For the purpose of repentance is so that people can be able to come to God. You know, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have the mercy of God. You know, if God had to condemn us for our sins, man, none of us like would ever be able to come as close. To knowing God. None of us would even have, you know, we wouldn't have had any hope of deliverance. Some of us will have come from certain backgrounds, certain families, certain pasts that if God was not merciful unto us, if God did not say, hey, I forgive you your sins, you can still draw near, you know, I don't know what, you know, you, what, what our lives are going to be like. So the biggest purpose of mercy is repentance. It's not a ticket to sin, it's repentance. So, um, the scripture I have is John 3.17. And it says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. You know, so again, mercy. The mercy of God is to put aside judgment, at least to, to, to roll it over, you know, from the lives of those who will come to God. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what, yeah. And the other scripture that I have is Luke 5, 31 and 32. It says, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, he said, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So yeah, so like I said, the biggest function of mercy is 
repentance. That's, that's the biggest function of mercy. Because God is so pure that if we have to relate with God according to our human nature or according to, you know, our, our ways, you know, if we have to relate with God according to our ways, none of us can approach God. None of us can approach God. But because of the sacrifice that Christ made for us, we can now approach him. We can now say, God, we are sorry for our sins. So, yeah, so that's that on that. Please let me know what you guys think about this. If you would like to see more topics, Bible topics, Bible discussions like this, leave a comment down below. If you have something to say about the mercy of God, I would really love to hear it. You know, I couldn't write every single thing today. And to be honest, I don't think that, yeah, the word of God can continually teaches us. But I don't think that I could by myself just expect to know everything about this subject. So leave a comment down below and um let me know because let me know that I'm not the only person if you agree with me, please let me know that I'm not the only person that feels as if this generation has literally abused the subject of mercy. Maybe it's not just this generation but just let me know what you guys think. And if you disagree with me that's fine too but you know just leave a comment down below so i know what you guys think about this subject so i'll leave it at that for today thank you guys so much for watching if you think that this is great content please give this a thumbs up share 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 if it's possible and if you think it's that good which i think will be awesome and subscribe down below for more videos from me and i'll see you guys on the next Bye.